Here we go. 30 minutes. And we're connecting. We're right on time. 7.15. And... Here we go. We're live on air again. It's First Labs live stream again from FRC West. And in, uh, in our studio today, we've got Adrian Neal, who's a, been a red hot programmer in LabVIEW for a long time. He's, a, he's an electric, electronic engineer, software engineer. Software de developer and electronic engineer. What's your credentials? PhD. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I work in PhD. Yeah. I wor I worked in the industry for about 30 years. Um, uh, I'm a graduate from University of Calgary. I'm a, a Bachelor of Science, a professional engineer, uh, working in the industry at my own company right now. And uh, so I've been using LabVIEW for the last 15 or so years, uh, developing a number of different projects, a number of different things. And today we're going to talk about robotics. So All right. I thought well, that would be fun. But the important thing that I want to know is how much first experience have you got? <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been involved with uh, with robotics for oh, probably since the early '90s. I do a lot of robotic design myself, uh, playing with uh, um, uh, playing with self-designed robots. Uh, but over the last ten years, I've been working with First Robotics. I've uh, helped out some groups uh, directly through their schools. Uh, I've been uh, involved in judging a lot of competitions, and in the last few years, been the head judge for the uh, first Lego League competitions in Calgary. You have, and you've been a great one too. Yeah, Thank you've you. seen a lot of control systems over the years uh, with your experience. Some pretty massive ones and some pretty quiet small ones. It's, <laughs> it's really interesting to look at the differences. Yeah, and it's neat to see the evolution too. They're becoming a lot more sophisticated. The new new controllers are, are so powerful now compared to how they were even five years ago. Definitely, definitely. And it's really yeah. interesting to see the tools advance in the use of those tools. As, as we move forward in these designs, uh, the tools become more and more efficient and they get more adapted to the way we use the tools. And that's been a bit of benefit for us to move forward into things like inter in, uh, Internet of Things. As, as we move forward into that technology, it's, uh, it's tools are becoming very powerful for us. Industry 4. Definitely. All definitely. Right. Okay. So you're going to uh, lead us by the hand into, uh, into, into LabVIEW today. Yeah, I, I thought today would be a good day to do like an introduction to LabVIEW 101 for the robotic engineer, robotic developer, for the new time and the first time developers of robots. Oh, fantastic. LabVIEW is a, is a pretty big design tool. It's designed to be used by a number of different types of people. Those that are brand new, who are just trying to play with some tool that's fairly effective and learn, to those people like myself who develop professionally with the tool and, and develop some fairly complex products. So it can be a little bit daunting to get kind of get started. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd like to take today and just sort of introduce you to LabVIEW sort of take that dump out of it to start off with, sort of give you a concept of what it is and how quickly you can get involved with it. All right, let's get going. Cool, so first of all, you gotta get LabVIEW. Once you get LabVIEW, you get it installed in your system. Doesn't really matter what version you get, but I would recommend something like LabVIEW 2015. Yeah, no, it wasn't developed, it was developed in 2015, but wasn't released until 2016, so it's not really that old. <laughs> but the advantage of LabVIEW different versions is they come up with a lot of different improvements and 2015 has a lot of really good improvements for the robotics group. So I would recommend at least going to LabVIEW 2015. It's very simple to start up with. It, it looks like a very simple front end interface and you can create a project, you can open an existing project. But I think one of the things that really gets you confused is, well, what the heck are we talking about here? A project is really a collection of stuff. It allows you to put stuff in a collection of places. So what you do is you start off by creating a project. And up on the file menu, you can create a new VI. We'll talk about what that actually is. But one thing you can do is create a project. When you install LabVIEW, it comes up with, well, what features do you want? What do you want to install it for? And one of the choices is robotics. But as you can see, there's a lot of choices here. So you look at that and you go, oh my God, where do I start off with? Well, to start off with, just to introduce yourself to LabVIEW, let's start off with a very basic, simple project. So I'm going to click on this thing and it comes up with this kind of funny looking window with this My Computer thing in here. You can see it's selected and then it has this project interface up in the top. Well, this hasn't been saved anywhere yet, so the very first thing I like to do is save it. 
So let's go ahead under the file menu, like everybody else, and we're going to save it. But I'm going to really allow myself to choose where I'm going to save it. And it's going to have some fancy dancy, common, wherever. It's going to choose some odd place to save it. I like to have an area on my computer called projects, and I put my projects there. And I might want to make a new, new win, a new folder to put it in, and let's call this my robot, just for the fun of it. So um, it just gives me a place to put. Did I spell that right? Roboto, my Roboto. There we go. Just gives me a place to put my project go into there and then I better name my project. You can see here it's given it some fancy name. I don't know what that is, but I'm just going to call it my robot just because I'm very inventive. Mm. And we'll go, okay. So now I've got it saved. Well, big deal. That doesn't really tell me much. But the end result is, is now it has created a collection place for all of the pieces that I do. It's created a place for me to put my executables when I built them. It's created a place for my compilations for my robot itself. It's created a place for everything that I do now to save. So that's a nice simple thing about LabVIEW is they try to make those very complex things simple. So first thing we're going to want to do is understand what, what we have in a project. A project, like I say, is a collection, but it allows us to have a number of different types of things. My computer is anything that I put in my computer is going to run on my computer. So, for example, I might create a new VI is a virtual instrument. Virtual instrument has two parts. It has the front panel, which you look at, yeah. and the block diagram, which you put your logic into. Oh, okay. So the front panel, for example, I might want to put on a switch. Just a nice, simple switch. And I might want to say, start motor. So you saw, I just clicked on the name. If I click on enough of it, I get the whole name, and then I just type in what it is I want to call it. But if you notice in the block diagram, it also puts this funny looking little square thing here, and if you'll notice it's a green color, but it keeps the name that I put on the front panel there. That's pretty handy, because when I'm looking for this control, I might want to be able to go here and say, where is it? You know, and move myself around my block diagram and say, you know, I can't hardly see it no more. Right, <laughs> there it is. Cute little thing about LabVIEW that makes it really nice is I can just double click. See how I can change my focus here? If I have that little hand looking thing, right. it actually allows me to move or change the state of my switch on and off, true right. or false. It's a Boolean switch. It's a Boolean switch. Yeah. Whereas if I click on it, you see it's sort of like highlighted. I can now say, well, where is that switch? I can double click on it and it'll take me to the block diagram right to the logic block for that switch, which I can drag around and put anywhere I want. So when you drag that switch around on your block diagram, does it change your control panel? No. Okay. They're independent. Okay. If you watch my block diagram, as I drag this thing around, okay. it doesn't change it. So as I want to rearrange my front panel to make my switches look kind of neat, I might have a couple of switches, but I might on my block diagram need to have them in a certain location so it makes sense for my logic and my block diagram. Okay. But on my front panel, I could have it in a nice location that makes it easy for me to see. Then I want to turn around and create some logic for my switches. I might want to say, okay, well this switch is really turn left. That's all well and good. But I want to have an output, some kind of indicator. So this is called a control. A control is controlled by the front panel, and the indicator is displayed on the front panel. So I might want to display some result. So I turn around and say, okay, what would happen if I take this one and I order this one into it? That means I should be able to put any one of them on, and my output should be true, but I want to see that output. Yeah. So I can, on the block diagram, I can right click on the output of my control logic, right click on it and say create an indicator. And on my front panel, well, I don't know where, where, did, where did it go, where did it go? So I can double click on it and it'll take me right to that indicator. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now I can take it and drag it down so it makes sense and then I want, want to write this so it actually makes sense. Okay, maybe my robot is going to turn 
turn left when I do this. And I'm going to maybe say this is turn left. This one might be, I'm going to leave it a start more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my logic should be if I start my motor and I ask for it to turn left, that my robot will try to turn to the left. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to choose, I want to see that that actually is going to work. So what I want to have, and this is a real beautiful thing about LabVIEW, I want to have a way for me to simulate or run this virtual instrument. It's quite simple. The top left here, you'll see a little arrow. Right. That little arrow actually runs the logic in my block diagram. Oh. So all I got to do is click on that little arrow and it ran. It did what? It ran. Well, what did it do? Well, it said, okay, if this is true or this is true, make this output true. Okay, so I want it to be true when I turn left, so let's turn turn left on. Oh, that's good. Hey, it looks like it's working. Oh, but wait a minute, I want to have my motor on when I turn left. Okay, so there's my motor on. Okay, wait a minute, is my logic right? Yeah. Well, what happens if my motor's on and I'm not turning left? Hey, wait a minute, my robot is going to turn left. My logic is not correct. I can go back to my block, block diagram very easily. I can select the component or logic that I think is incorrect. I can say, well, I need the motor to be on and I need the left-hand signal to be on before it turns left. Mm -hmm. So that's simply replace that with an AND. That view is really neat. I've selected it, right-click on it, brings up this nice little menu, replace it with and it automatically says, well, that was Boolean, so you're probably going to want to replace it with something Boolean. Yeah, and I know that the logic I want to use is AND. So I put in my AND logic. Now I go back. Control E will switch me back and forth between these two. Control E. Hold the Control key down and touch your E. Now I can say, well, the logic should be, don't turn left until my motor is started. So I run it. Aha. My motor is not started, but I have asked it to turn left. Aha! My motor has started, and I've asked it to turn left. And now I can see that my logic is functioning correctly. It's nice Just and like simple. That. So obvious. It is. Can you can you continuously cycle? Well, well, that's the exact thing. Uh, yeah. You might want to turn around and say, well, yeah, but I've got these inputs, and these inputs are going to be seeing different things, and my logic is going to be seeing different things. So what I really want to do is have this run continuously until I tell it to stop. Well, in, in uh, programmatic language, we might use a while loop. So Lambda gives you a number of loop choices. If I'm on this block diagram, and I right-click anywhere, it mm -hmm. comes up with a whole series of menus, depending on what you have installed on your system. Right. And in these series of menus, it has a lot of different things. Ah, there's that billion block. If you remember, yep. when I right-clicked on the old block, and I said, replace it with something, it automatically came up with this Boolean block. So I can get lots of Boolean logic. But I want this VI, virtual instrument, to run continuously. So I want some sort of structure or some sort of loop. LabVIEW uses the term structure in there. Mm -hmm. And while loop. Well, you know what? I don't know what that darn thing is. I can oh. never remember where it is. I don't want to go looking for it. There's got to be a better way. Well, yes, sir, there is. There's this thing called quick drop. Quick drop. Quick drop is really cool. Quick drop allows you to be able to find things by simply typing in what you want to find. So I can get to quick drop by holding control key down and hitting the space bar. And what it does is it comes up with this funny little menu that says, what do you want to look for? Oh, I want to look for a or block. Well, look, I typed in the word or, and suddenly there it is. If I select it, there's my or. I don't have to remember, right click, find the menu, go to the or block, pick it down, put it down, and sure enough, they're exactly the same. Mm -hmm. That's not what I want. What I wanted is a loop to do this, but I don't know what kind of loop I want. So, quick drop, control space, type in loop. And there you go, there's your choices. You get a timed loop, a while loop, a for loop, and it's going to pick the first one alphabetically. For wow. loop. Yeah. Hey, let's try that. See what it is. Double click on it, 
And it gives you, if you look at my cursor now, has this kind of little boxy thing on it. Yeah, it's like a drag box. A drag box, exactly. I left click, drag it over my stuff. Hmm. That's There's a, a for loop right there. Real simple. What does the for loop do? Well, you notice it's broken. It's saying there's something, it can't run because there's something wrong with your BI. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with my BI. So I just double click on that and it comes up with this error message. It says, you can read it, for loop, N is not wired. N of my for loop is not wired. What oh, the heck is that? Go back to my for, oh, there's the N. It's not wired. Loop count, it says. Loop count. Interesting. Well, let's put a, create a constant for there. Sure. Zero. Okay, notice it's not broken anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Go back to my front panel and hit the run. Hey, wait a minute. I was trying to run continuously. Yep. Not the right, right. thing. Well, let's go back to my for loop and let's say... Let's run it five times and see what happens. Oh, man, that's not what I want. That's <laughs> not helping me. It did it five times, but so fast. It did fast. it five times, yeah. but it's so fast. Well, I might want to slow it down. Go back to my look for time. Okay, we've got some sort of fancy waveforms and times. and Oh, that's not going to help me. There's got to be a better way of doing this. Well, I can right-click on it and say... What other choices do I have for loops? Notice it tells you that there's conditional terminals, there's other things, but I want to replace it with something that makes sense. Right. Hmm, doesn't really give me a lot of choices there. So, let's go get rid of that. I'm going to just remove it. Don't need this anymore. It's not really doing me any good. That's my delete key. Oh, constant. Let's try that control space, quick drop. Let's type our loop in again. Let's see what other choices we got. Hmm, we got a time loop. Well, ah, while loop. While something is true, stay in the loop. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's do that one. Yeah. Again, my cursor's gone to this sort of square boxy thing. There we go. Hmm. Notice some broken arrow again. Click on the broken arrow, it tells you what's wrong. In this case, it says your while loop conditional terminal is not wired. Okay, so it's saying mm -hmm. while what? Conditional terminal. Oh, there we go. Yeah. See, it says loop condition. Cool, it's not wired to anything. Okay, let's wire to something. Let's wire to a control. Hmm, stop. Okay, what is that? Oh, there, so on my front panel, it added this thing that says stop. Oh, that's pretty easy. I know what to do with that. So that must mean that this loop is going to continue on until I hit the stop button. Cool. Let's do that. Hey, I'm, I like keys. Mm -hmm. And if you go in your menus, you will find that one of the menus of operate, run, which is this button here, mm -hmm. is control R. So I can hit Control R, and now it's running, and it didn't stop. Notice that that grid pattern on my front oh. panel is gone. Your little arrow is different too. It's black. yes, it's black, and there's a red stop button. Oh. Oh, now notice how it's immediately responding to my inputs and interactions. Hmm. hmm. And I can go into here, and notice my cursor now changes shape as I move it around here. It's a hand thing. I don't have that arrow I had before. Right. I have my hand. I have this little thing that looks like a P that shows up when I'm over some... See how the wire's flashing? P. P. If I click on that, it says, oh. Probe. Probe. Probe tells me what is the state of that wire. Well, that wire is my turn left indicator. All right, so let's go back to my turn left indicator. Let's change its state. Notice my state immediately changes. This allows me to see what's happening throughout the logic of my code, probe at any spot in my logic with any number of probes. Incredible. What and see the exact state. See how quickly it is that I've got some really cool information? The one quirk you'll find out about this probe tool is you can't see multiple things at the same time. 
You can only see one thing at the same time. Well, that doesn't help me. I really want to see all of those things, mm -hmm. the state of all of those things. Okay, how do I get back to this? I can't, I can't edit this thing here. All i got to do is stop, either from the block diagram or from my front panel, stop executing. Notice my front panel has returned to a grid pattern. It's now telling me, oh, go ahead and edit this thing now. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. But I want my probe to see the state of all three of them. How can I do that? Well, I can simply create an array, I can build an array, and I can plug into that array all of my inputs. You see how I just expanded that by going to moving my cursor until the arrow state changes? Right. Expand it. Now, now I get to choose. Well, which one do I want first? Well, I want my motor start, start to be the first one, so just wire it up. Cool. And I want the second one to say be my motor turn, and my third one to be the end result. The okay. But now I want to be able to see that. So I'm going to create an indicator for that. And I'm going to probe that. So I can say, ah, oh, get rid of all of these probes. That's a nasty thing. There. All I got to do is close that window. My probes are automatically gone for me. So LabVIEW is very good about doing these kind of things for you. It allows you to expand and move things around. Isn't that is, is that little uh, array window now showing up on our control panel? Yeah. How do I find it? Double click on it in the block diagram. This is yeah. where I put it down there. Yeah. Boom, it shows right up for me. Look at that. Isn't that neat? And I can turn around and I can say, wow, show me the state of all of them. I can drag it. Notice my arrow changes. Right. I can drag it out this way or I can drag it this way. Whatever way makes you happy. Oh, that way makes me happy. That way makes me happy, too. <laughs> but let's say I, ha I couldn't see that. I can turn around and hide that indicator so it's no longer visible because I don't want the customer to see that. No. But I want to be able to probe that in order to see the state of the system while I'm doing my development. But I don't want it on that front panel for my customer to use. So I'm going to say run. It's all well and good. Oh man, what was the state of that again? All right, right. All we gotta do is come up here, block diagram, and probe it. Hmm. Oh, your probe. What is it? Whole My probe has got a whole bunch there, but the top three. So I turn my left indicator on. Which one was that? Do you remember? Second one. You can see it go true or false. Turn my start motor on. The first one, true or false. I have to have them both on for my indicator to turn true. Just like downtown. Just like that. Quick and easy. And that is the beauty of LabVIEW. It allows you to do all of this kind of stuff very quickly and very easily. And graphically, too. I haven't seen a single uh, uh, syntax command yet. No. No. no structured text. There's no, exactly. there's no convoluted instructions. Exactly. And another beautiful thing about it is that I can turn around and say, well, you know, my block diagram here is getting pretty messy. Yeah. I want to be able to make this simpler and easier to read. I'll just uh, select it a little bit better. I'm going to turn around and say, okay, I've gotten a whole bunch of stuff, and I need to add more logic into here, and I'm going to want to make my block diagram any bigger, and I can turn around and select a block, and I can say, under the edit menu, I can say, make this a sub-VI, create sub-VI. And in one quick little click, all that logic is encapsulated in one block. And notice as I drag that block around, my wires all stay attached. Okay, now that I've created that sub-virtual instrument, can I, can I use it other places? Yes. So now what we've done is we've created these things and we've actually ran them but we haven't really saved them. Do you notice the title here is unsaved, untitled? Yeah. Untitled? Yeah. So now I should save this thing. So I'm going to save as... Okay. Mm -hmm. And notice where I put it? My robot. That's where my project is. Same place you started from. Same place I started. So now I just got to give it a name. Mm -hmm. Well, this is my main block for lack of a better term, that's my main block. Okay. And now it's trying to save the other one. What do I want to call it? Well, let's call this logic block. Isn't that very impressive? Okay. 
So now what have I got? Well, I've got this logic block. Mm -hmm. In this logic block, notice it's connectors. Over here is a connector block, and over here is a front panel. Front panel is what it looks like in the block diagram of other ones. Oh. And the block diagram is wired, so these inputs are wired up here, 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 and here. Well, which one is which? I don't know. Let's try it. So all I gotta do is come up here and click on it, and it highlights the one that's wired there. Oh, wow. Isn't that neat? Very cool. And then I can turn this up. Wait a minute, it's backwards. I want it the other way around. If I hold my control key, I got one selected. I hold my control key down. Notice that's got to, uh, it changes it to a scissor shaped thing. Yep. I can click on the other one. It's now switched them. Wow. The top one is now turned left, and the bottom one is start motor. Just like that. Just like that. Real simple. Come back to my block background, it doesn't know the difference. But if I hadn't done that, say with my output here, this one, change yeah. it with this one. Yeah. Now I've got, on the top, I've got my array. Oops. On the top, I've got my array. On the bottom, I've got my block diagram. Notice this block diagram is now broken. These wires are now broken. See this? Yeah. It won't let you run. What? Remember we just clicked on the broken arrow to say, what's wrong? Right. Wires are incorrect. Which wire? Click on this and it tells you which wire is incorrect. That wire is incorrectly wired. Why is it incorrectly wired? Well, this is supposed to be boolean out. Well, that doesn't give me any information. Let me rename this. Rather than boolean out, I'm going to say this means turn left. This is system state. This one is start motor, turn left. Now these output labels make sense. Mm -hmm. Control S will save it. Now when I come up here and it says, oh, system state is this top one, turn left is this bottom one. I've got these wired up to the wrong one. Huh. Just like that. I got two choices. I can come back here, I can switch them back. Notice my block diagram is all fixed. Yep. My wires are all nice. Everybody's happy. But you know what? I think this should indicate to me that my robot is supposed to turn left. <laughs> I shouldn't be looking at the... I don't know what that is. That's some funny looking... oscilloscopy looking kind of thing. Oscilloscopy <laughs> looking. Well, that's not very good. So what did I do? Well, I said I want to change how this looks in my block diagram. Go into it. So sing, double click left mouse button. Come up here to the icon. This is called an icon on here. Mm -hmm. Come up here to the icon. Double click on it with the left. And all of a sudden it comes up with this pictorial view in the layers menu. And there it is right there. There's my icon right there. This is an editor for the icon. Oh, very cool. I can select the whole part of it. I can select a small part of it. I can delete, I can add, I can paint. This is very much like a very simple paint editor. You can link this up link this up to a very complex editor if you want. I've left this very simple for this tutorial. Create your own icon. I'm gonna create my own picture here. What is my picture gonna say? Well I want to have a border so I know where the outer edge is. Right. I want my picture to look like a robot. Oops. A robot. Turning left. Mm-hmm. So, do you have a degree in fine arts, too? <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while. <coughs> Excuse my copy. It takes a while to kind of figure this out. But that's a very simple little symbol that will kind of let anybody know what my brilliant robot is going to do. <laughs> I might even want to change the background color a little bit, make it some nice little light color. I just clicked on this one left. Comes up with this color palette. I left mouse clicked the one I liked. Yeah. I clicked on my paint icon with the left mouse. I come in here and because it's on the right hand side, not the left hand side, if I depress my left mouse button, it used the left one. That's not what I wanted to do. I use the right mouse button and it paints it that color. Incredible. That simple. Now it's supposed to, by default, be called the VI icon 
it does not matter if you actually name it like that. I like to be consistent with LabVIEW. I like to now save it, close that up, and look at my pretty little icon now on my picture. Fantastic. Nice and simple. That's beautiful. It's nice and simple. <laughs> LabVIEW is beautiful at allowing you to do a lot of things very quickly, very simply. And that is the power of LabVIEW. All looks good. Got our little robot moving along. But you know what? I'd like to see over time what it's actually doing. Right. So let's put on some kind of little waveform thingy that might tell us a little bit about what it's actually doing. Uh, I don't know what this is. Hmm. Okay. Some kind of funny looking thing. This little block. Let's wire it up. This is my output. That's what I... Okay, what did I do? Hmm. Can't really do that. Error message. Uh-oh. Yeah. You've connected to terminals of different types. So this thing here that I stuffed down on my block diagram can't really handle that. But what I can do is I can turn it around and say, well, I want it to really look like that. It's going to give me two levels. It's going to give me off and on. So what I can do is I can turn around and say, well, I'm notice I've clicked on this guy. I want to insert into there, uh, change it from a Boolean value to a number. That would be really neat. Boolean value to digit zero or one. And suddenly I'm all working. Notice how that thing is not longer orange, it's blue now? Yeah. That represents, if you look closely at it, you'll see it's a U6, I16. Mm -hmm. I16, integer 16. 16-bit integer. 16-bit integer, which yeah. means it's minus 16 digit. No. Yeah. Right? Minus big number plus a big number. <laughs> Control E. That looks pretty good. Let's see what's happening here. So now I run it. Ah. I don't know. What's it doing? Notice my numbers are crippling along so fast I can't really see anything. Right. It's not really very useful. Yeah. What I want to do is slow this process down. So again, I'm coming here, I'm right clicking, I'm coming into my time window here, and there's this nice little thing called wait. That you want to learn quick drop. Wait. There it is. Oops. Wait. Wait for. Wait. There's wait. lots of different things. I not type it in correctly? Wait. Okay, we'll do this the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Wait. I want to just give me a new value every half second. Notice this says yep. milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Milliseconds. Half second, 500 milliseconds. I can do another couple of things. I can turn around and say, well, I need help with this thing. If I do Control H, it pops up this little screen here, mm -hmm. Context Help. Context Help is sensitive to where I am. So I can move it over a wire, I can move it over a block, I can move it over my own VI, I can move it over inputs, and it tells me all about that little thing. Wow. Very useful. Very. Very useful. And you were saying the conditional block wasn't there as part of the conditional part of the loop there. It's all really cool. Now it's going to give me a point every second. Then I can turn around and run this thing again. It's a little bit slower. Notice my numbers aren't moving quite so fast anymore. They're nice and slow. Now I can see it happening. Now I can see it change. Just it's not like so that. fast. It's a 16-bit number, but there's only 0 and 1. Ah, because you went from binary to uh, an integer. That's right, because this is 0 and 1. Uh. But I can turn around and do all kinds of neat little things. I can turn around and say, well, I want it to, every time it goes around, I want it to get it to a bigger number, as long as it's true. Ah, 
there's just some new stuff in LabVIEW that makes life so nice. I want to put something else in this logic block here, but there's not enough room. Yeah. So I hold down my control key, press my left mouse button, and drag it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it made room for me. Not nice. It just moved everything. Uh, stretched it out. Stretched it out. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is I want to have, anytime this is true, I want to have it counting for me. Mm -hmm. Counting up a number. My graph will go up, and then the next time it's false, I want it to decrement a number until it gets down to zero. All right. Ah, so we got some logic now we have to build. All right. Cool. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is have some sort of counter. Well, I want to take my original number and say increment it by one. So let's do our fancy increment. Ah, great. So now we need some sort of number. So I can give it a number. Let's give it a constant. Create constant. Start it off as one. Oh, I don't want it to be orange. What is orange? If I notice when I when I icon when I move my mouse over it, right. my help menu is telling me what it is. It's double. I want it to be an integer. I want it to be an integer 16. So I simply right click on it and I go to properties or presentation. Now notice presentation gives me choices only about the type it is. I16. Property gives me a lot more information but one of the properties is that data type. So just simply right click presentation select I16. Poof. That's pretty simple. Just like that. Now I've got this thing that's supposedly going to count. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at it. So I'm going to create an indicator. Right. And I'm going to watch it count up. Let's run this thing. Where's my indicator? I don't know. Double click on it. Ah, oh, there it is. Let's drag it down over here. Make it a little bigger. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. It's supposed to be counting up. It's not counting doesn't up. look like it's counting up. Why not? not? Well, because every time it does the loop, it's taking zero and adding one to it. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. No. I wanted a counter. You see how I'm using this run button right. to allow me to look and figure out this logic. Information gathering. Information gathering. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a sub BI so I can put all this logic in a new sub BI. Okay. Oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button instead of. I select it. I'm going to say edit, create sub BI. Now it's this new sub BI for me. I've got it all in this nice little place. I'm going to save it. And there's the control panel for the new sub BI. Right. And I'm going to call this um, count up down. Because when it's true, I want it to count up. When it's false, I want it to count down. I'm going to go OK. Hmm, this is really cool. I need to make this logic work. I can run just this logic block. I don't have to run anything else. I can turn around and say, okay, run. Remember that it's not in this while loop. It's only going to run once. Mm -hmm. right? So I turn around and say, okay, I want it to increment. Well, it did increment, but I want it to increment a different number every time. So what I need to do is take the last number and put it onto the input and say, increment that number. How do you do that? Well, you need to feed back the output to the impact, input. Okay, so you've got to feed Click back. drop, type in feed back. Oh, I don't have to know. I just say, oh, and now I wire it up. Boom, boom. Notice it turned blue. It automatically knew what I wanted to do. And, uh, remove this. Just disconnect that. Oh, wait a minute, it's orange again. That's no good. I don't want it to be orange. <laughs> I want it to be blue. Well, orange is double. Right. So what I need to do is I need to initialize it. Down here, you'll see a little initializer choice. So it's a double in double integer? 32-bit? It is double now. 64-bit. 64-bit. So all I need to do is wire this into here, and now it goes back to blue. So I've told it, start at zero, and increment every time you run. Start right. at zero, increment every time you run. Okay, so let's try that. Run, it's one, run, it's one. Why, why, why? Wait a minute, that's not right. That doesn't seem right. Well, if you notice, every time it ran, it also stopped. 
So it restarted, and when it restarted, it reinitialized. Mm -hmm. When it reinitialized, it then incremented it by one from zero. So you're back to one. So I'm back to one. Not quite what I wanted. But wait a minute, I now have my logic block inside this logic block. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just be real fancy here. Let's just make us a nice little icon. It says this thing is going to go up, or it's going to go down. You can see my beautiful graphics here. Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? It's the best thing I've been seen since my Atari 800. It's going to go up or down? Yeah. Okay. Save. <laughs> isn't that impressive? Yep. <laughs> but notice it's connected. Yep. It's connected. And it's in my wall loop now. And I can double click on it to get into it. It's very hard now because it's very small. <laughs> I can get into it. I can see what's happening in it. It's numerical. No, it's inside of my loop. What is this? What's happening here is that it will only initialize once until the stop button is hit, until we stop this loop. So it's going to retain, we go back to our logic, it's going to retain its value every time it runs through the loop and feed it back for the next loop. So now let's have a look at this. We're going to run this. We're going to look at our little incrementer. Ah, ha, 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 look at that. Now our number is going up. There's, there's, a, ro there's a ramp there. A there's a ramp there. Okay, but that's not what I want. I want it to go up only when this is true. Okay, okay so I'm not quite there yet. I've got the basics of my logic. So I want to increment when this is true. What do I want to do? Well, I also want to decrement when it is false. Yep. So I need to have a negative in there, or a minus, or a minus one. Decrement. Okay. So I'm going to take that from my feedback loop. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and go into here. Uh-oh. Can't do that. Can't have two wires connected to the same thing. So I need to have some way of selecting between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here, I'm going to just expand this out so we've got a bit of room. I'm going to put in here a selector. Go space, select, enter. Oh, that didn't work. Neat thing about this quick drop is when I've chosen what I want to do, I can and I'm just going to hit the configure here to show you a little bit of what you can do. There's some short keys you can do. I can replace a component that's on my board. Mm -hmm. I can insert into where I've selected. Or I can just put it down on the block diagram. So what I really want to do is I want to insert into this wire. So in my case, that's control P. Oops, select. It won't do it because the wire is broken. There we go. Inserted it. Even wired up one of the sides. I wire up the other side. And now I need this truth logic on here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a control because I want it to be visible on the outside. Create a control. There's my control. Put it out over here. Oh, but wait a minute, I've got to connect it up to something. Where's my control? Where's my block diagram? Oh, wait a minute, that's on my front panel is my block di my my connector block. Notice my connector block, mm -hmm. my picture. Mm -hmm. There's my pieces. Let's organize them a little bit. Put left and right. Right is output, left is input. We're going to talk about that in a second. Connect up here. Connect that up. Cool. So I'll save. I'll show you something really neat that I've done. Now it's connected up. There's an input now. There's an input. Okay. <laughs> let's have a let's have a look see at that. Now we're gonna run it. It's counting up. Counting down. Counting up. Wait a minute, my logic is wrong. Counting down. <laughs> my logic is backwards. When the output to the left is true, I want it to count up. When it's false, I want it to count down. 
So you see how quickly we can analyze our logic. I can simply go into that block there and say, no, man, you got your logic wrong. That should be the inverse. Here, not, control I, control save. I could run it here a few times. Remember that it doesn't increment there. Mm -hmm. Now I can put it in here. I can run it. What's it doing? Counting up because it's true? Great. False. Counting down. Now we've got our logic. It's beautiful. Real simple. Yay. Now I can turn around and say, well, let's feed that into my block diagram here. No, I'm just deleting these things, selecting them, deleting them. Now I take this output here. Notice my space bar changes the direction the wire's mapped. Oh, yeah. Click it up there. Bring these two beside each other. We're going to talk about why I'm doing that in a second. Nice and simple logic. I've got my up down thingy. It's going to be based on this true false thingy, which is based on the logic in here, which is based on the state. And it's controlling my motor. And oh my gosh, my logic is getting so complicated. And so but in, in reality, look at my picture is really simple here. There's logic inside here, logic inside here, and it's running. And it just shows you enough to be dangerous. Adrian, uh -huh, that's there we are. Yeah. Now you can see it's counting up. Yep. Counting down. Yep. And it's that simple. It's that quick. And that is the beauty of LabVIEW. It allows you to build up things very quickly. Well, and you know, for troubleshooting, information is so important. And here yes. you have an oscilloscope built right into your system. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And I've got these logic blocks, which I can individually run. I can run this logic block. I can change the input to this logic block and say, what are my outputs? What does it look like when this state is? Yes, this I could go to this logic block. Right? And I could say, if it's true, this should go to one. Mm -hmm. It should go up. Mm -hmm. But if it's false, it should go to down. It should go to minus one. I can prove my logic at any level, at any time, without having to run the whole block of code. Sweet. That's been crazy. Yeah. And that is the beauty of LabVIEW. Hmm. A couple of things to remember about LabVIEW. Generally, it runs from the top left down to the bottom right corner of your block diagram. Just like reading a book. Just like reading a book. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean to say it doesn't read this, then read that, then move into there, work out the logic, and then come out here. What makes it do that is it's a data flow language. Mm -hmm. A data flow language means it takes the data it's needed for inputs before it goes into that section and perform that action. Okay. So it takes all of the data for it. So here, this one takes all of the data that's required to produce the state on this line mm -hmm. before it starts and runs this VI. So this VI runs first, mm -hmm. then this one runs first. Data flow left to right, top to bottom. Uh, so you could you could get in trouble with racing or. or Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I can put a whole new logic block down here. I can put in some new logic. Whatever I want to put in there, I'm just going to put in some... Another, I'm going to wire it up to there. I'm going to wire it up to there. And I'm going to... Put another output here, create an indicator. Now this is basically doing what that one was doing. The point is not about that. Mm -hmm. The point is I'm not going to remove this over here. Mm -hmm. And you would say, well, okay, that just means it's going to run after that block. Just by its physical position. By its physical position. That's not true. But I can find out how it's going to run simply by stepping through the logic. And I can step through the logic up here in the logic blocks. When I start the run button, it's just simply going to run. Mm -hmm. Or I can step. Step. It's telling me where I am. Step. It's telling me what block it's going to run. Step. Now I'm inside that block. Oh. Running the logic inside that block. What happened? Well, I was inside this block. i got to go to that block. Get to its block diagram. And now run. Let's see. It's stopped. See the one that's blinking is where it right. stopped. It's paused. So I can run. Run. 
Now it's going to run out. Notice, run out. Now it's going to run. He hasn't got to this logic yet. Doesn't matter where I put it, it's going to choose, it's going to choose its path. I can step over that block. Mm -hmm. I can step over that block. Then it did this time. Notice it's gone backwards in my block diagram. It looked like a jet. So the order in which it runs things, although it does say from left to right, generally says, do the logic in terms of the data flow. Mm -hmm. The data flow is from the left inputs to the right outputs. Hmm. Something to remember. Incredible. So can a person um, combine LabVIEW with uh, other languages like Java or C? Can you have uh, processes or procedures written in C and brought into LabVIEW? Yes, you can. And that's starting to get up into a fairly extensive level of language and using mm -hmm. this LabVIEW application. LabVIEW this does give you what's called an interface. And that interface allows you to call a function that's created outside of LabVIEW but made into a library. Oh. And so when you create this library, you can then interface to that library. Wow. And, and if you want to go find it, it's fairly complicated, but there's a number of different ways to call a function. Mm -hmm. um, and one is call a function indirectly. You can directly access memory, or you can call to a function indirectly. There's, there's a whole series of tools that allow you to talk and interface with different languages. I see. Yeah. But, you know, LabVIEW is powerful enough, especially for a first robotics competition. And, you know, we're just getting started because one of the yeah. beauties of LabVIEW is they have lots and lots of examples built into the code itself. Let me give you an example. Let's say I wanted to use a camera and I want to take that camera to to look at a, a, an assembly line tray or a bunch of washers coming down an assembly line. I don't have a clue where to start. Well, you know what? I just can come can come up and I can say, hmm, let's go and give me some help uh, and let's find an example. And so it's going to look in your system and it's going to say, wow, you've got lots of examples. Okay, I want an example in, what did I say? Uh, uh, let's have an example in... Uh, robotics. I, robotics. Yeah, there's robotics examples as well. I've got a lot of stuff install yeah. on this app, uh, system. But it gives you lots of very, very good examples of robots. But, and there's another beauty here in LabVIEW, and there's a faster way at that. I'm just going to save all of this, just because I like to save things. Right from the very start, uh, I just want to show you, when you come into LabVIEW, I can come back to that project really bad, mm -hmm. really quick. Just by clicking on that project, Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. Clicking on my project. Where's my project? My robot. There it is. Pop it over here. There! And there's all my VIs in there. Wow. And I can turn around and say, well, I want a virtual folder. It's just a location for me to stuff. I'm going to call this sub VIs. And I can shove all of my sub VIs in there and have just my main VI at the top. Well, that cleans it up makes it nice and easy to see. <laughs> and I can turn around and I can create a new application. That's easy. Incredible. And turn it into an executable. And I can give it a, a nice name. As we've been very picky about our, our names here. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> ha ha, fooled you. And then I can turn around and say, well, I want this. And all of the sub -BIs. I don't have to include any of the sub -BIs. That's all I, I want all of that to be built into my project. There it is. Build. Done. That's how quickly it is to make it executable out of your project. Incredible. It is absolutely incredible. And it's yeah. done already. Yeah. And I can turn around and go. Yeah. And I can run it now. There it is. Executable. Yeah. Boom. And I'm running this thing that's an executable. That just happened to be what I took as my top level VI. So you've developed some pretty advanced projects in LabVIEW. Mm-hmm. Goodness, and, and but what you show me right here it looks like a beginner could use this thing after ten minutes. Exactly. Incredible. Exactly. Yeah. And if you notice, in what I did is I included the wrong sub bi as the target. Yeah. I want to know that's the wrong one. This is the one I want to have there. Okay. 
that's the beauty of LabVIEW is it allows you to start programming and checking things out and trying things very very quickly hmm fantastic Adrian thanks very much awesome I'll show you one more thing oh, just hey, for the fun of it don't stop now okay one of the beauties of LabVIEW yep. is that they have a lot of built-in projects. Mm -hmm. So what we can do, I'm just going to close this project. Where's my close project? Close project button. Yeah, don't save it. I was just playing anyway. One of the beauties of LabVIEW is when I went to open or create project, it gave me this whole list of choices. Mm -hmm. One of the beauties for you guys and robots is there's a robot choice robotics choice way down here somewhere mm -hmm. now I've got a lot of stuff in here but I just click on that and it automatically comes up with their robot kits and I can automatically select that and I can say build it for that kit this is the IP address that I have it at right whatever your IP address is mm -hmm. and go yeah okay that's what I want I want this moving around robot Cool. <laughs> yep. I just do it. Boom, boom, boom. It comes up with it. It builds it right away. It puts all of these things together. It's a very complex piece that it's put together. Mm -hmm. But it is, at the very simplicity state, it is the very basics of what you're going to use to build your robot. It'll put all of the pieces in there. It's taking a bit of time to work. It's going to put all these pieces together. So you can now take their project and build it into your product it's really really that simple and it's built the project put all of these VIs mm -hmm. it saved it somewhere where did it save it well I just go save as and it tells me exactly where it is but I can go into files here mm -hmm. and it tells me where it is too notice it's got my lab you data my project, there's my files, and then in my executing in lab views, this is the lab view stuff, and there's all of the files it's got. It's great sub BIs, it's done all of that for me. I can go into my file system, I can go to LV data, because that's that's the default place of where it puts it. Myself, I don't tend to use that, but that is the default place. I'm just trying to find my C drive here, C drive, because that's where it puts it in. Just find LV data. And it's thrown the project into there. It's thrown a few projects into there. Huh. This is the one that we just made. And it's thrown all that stuff into there. And it's got all of this beautiful executable code already set up for you. Mm -hmm. And it's got a simulator. What does it? It actually simulates the robot? Yeah. Wow. I just hit the run button. It's just, just setting itself up. And there it is. This is the code that is built for you automatically. How long did that take me? Seconds. Seconds. Incredible. And now I can take this code, which is working like this, right. designed to run on my robot kit. Right. It's designed to do that. And, and there's the little guy right there. Yeah, he's running around. But this, right? And bang, 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 and it's there. And that's the beauty of LabVIEW. They've got so much examples. And if you go onto the website, you'll find tons and tons of examples for I people. I wonder if they have a FRC robot simulation. They have a lot of simulations. Wouldn't that be incredible? You could program your virtual robot even before you put your first bolt to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do some poking around and see if we can find one. Yeah. And then all you need to do is take this code yeah. in this project, take this code and make it do what you want it to do. Notice that it's already added in the controller board that's actually on your project, mm -hmm. your, your robot. Mm -hmm. This is the sub BIs. Mm -hmm. So remember, we were doing all this up on my computer. It's going to run on my PC. Right. Well, these are the sub BIs running on that robot. Indeed. And I can open up any sub BI, front panel, block diagram. It's got that nice orange color. It's got all these different things. Very quick. Incredible. Very quick. So for you guys that are into robots, LabVIEW is a great way to get started. It's quick, it's easy to start with, and it's very, very powerful. You can do a lot with it. So have fun. Oh, I am excited. LabVIEW is included with every uh, kit of parts in FIRST Robotics. These guys got the uh, 
key they can get the thing licensed for a whole year now this is an expensive package too it is for you to buy lab view it's uh, thousands, thousands of dollars, dollars definitely oh my goodness yep. so first robotics alumni and teams are very lucky to get an application like this definitely. and really really lucky to have you coming by Adrian, I know you've had a huge. You just came back from India. Yes, yes, I, I uh, have a customer in uh, in works with the government in India, doing a lot of research up in there. So I was uh, I was in at that customer site, a huge installation, doing uh, doing some upgrades. Oh my gosh! Two weeks in India, and I come back to fifteen below. Is it? No, fifteen below. Eight below, ten below. It's <laughs> like a bit of a change from thirty above. Yeah, but the air is so clear and yeah. fresh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's nice here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a Calgarian born and bred. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yeah. Oh, Adrian, that's anyway. been fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Great, great. Okay. I hope this helps you guys out. Get started. And, and takes out the oh my god part about LabVIEW. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's can good. be daunting when you look at that project that I just created, that last one. Yeah, it's big. There's a lot of stuff there. Oh yeah, but, but if you start and you just you know a little bit at a time. Yep. You, I can go into any one of these VIs and and you know see what's inside it and run just that little bit. Yeah. You know and and try it out. Some of them are locked because they're owned by somebody, but <laughs> it's true. Well, this is, I'm inside your library oh, and, and that a, kind of stuff. But there's a lot of VIs out there yeah. that in the first community, too. Yeah, you know? exactly. So. Exactly. It's a, it's a great place to, it's a great way to get started and to play, and, uh, and you, can, you can try things out, excuse me, you can try things out before you actually get into the depth of what your project is. All right. Play right, with right. your logic. Okay, well, that was it. I guess let's wrap it up. So next week, uh, it was a fantastic talk on LabVIEW, and I think we got to come back to this again very soon. And so obviously we've just touched the tip of the iceberg. So next week we're going to get into a second level of SolidWorks. We're going to get into more, some more advanced features in uh, uh, creating models, parts, and and uh, and assemblies, and maybe even get some animation going on in there. After that, it's strategics too, and then we're into the build season, everybody. It's going to be a, a kickoff at SAIT, a quick build at SAIT, and robot in three days at SAIT, and off we go. So I uh, hope you guys can make it back next week, next Monday about 7 o'clock, same time, same channel, and we look forward to seeing you then. Have a nice evening. Thanks very much. You too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>